Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 13. Q1 earnings for Tesla is looking good. Daimler is about to stop development of the hydrogen car. Lucid Motors EV factory is starting to take shape. And South Australia is about to install 300,000 power walls. And Jay Leno is driving the Cybertruck. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Q1 earnings call. Tesla had the first ever profitable Q1. And the brand new Model Y actually contributed to this profit as the Model Y is already profitable. Wow. And this also means they have been profitable in three quarters in a row. Congratulations, Tesla. And if Tesla can be profitable in Q2, they will have made, yeah, four quarters. Not the hardest math right there, but four quarters in a row. That means that they will become part of S&P 500 which is the 500 biggest companies in the world, but you also have to be profitable in four quarters in a row to become a member. This will be very good for Tesla indeed. But to make a profit in Q2 will be very difficult with the whole world on lockdown and the Fremont factory not producing any cars at the moment. But hopefully they will get back to work soon at Fremont too. So it's going to be tough to get profitable in Q2, but we will cross all our fingers for Tesla. Tesla did make a 32% increase in total revenue in Q1 compared to Q1 last year. So thanks to a great Q1, where Tesla also got 354 million US dollars by other automakers in order for them to comply with the emission regulations around the world. And of course, the 2.3 billion US dollars in capital raise that Tesla has done in Q1, Tesla now has 8.1 billion dollars in the bank. And as Tesla said in the conference call, they are not cutting down on expenses in these special times. Unlike most other companies, they will still be full throttle ahead. And he said that Tesla battery day will probably be in the third week of May, and it will be the most exciting day in the company's history. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. Elon did also say that he still thinks that at the end of the year they will have full self-driving ready, where there still has to be a human at the wheel ready to take over, but that the car should be able to drive from driveway to destination. Maybe this is on Elon time, but wow, can't wait to see this one in action. And we are seeing all the people with the new updates for the Tesla showing off that the car now stops automatically for red lights at an intersection. Tesla is just so far ahead of everybody else combined, as Elon also mentioned at the conference call. Tesla's pooling deal with Fiat Chrysler is proving to be a killer combo in Europe. New data from the International Council on Clean Transportation shows that the pooling deal between Tesla and Fiat Chrysler is proving to be a strong force as the two companies combined recently made up for 39% of the total electric vehicle registrations in Europe. According to the ICCT, the Fiat Tesla duo made up for nearly two of every five electric vehicles sold in Europe during the first quarter of 2020. The next closest competitor was Volvo, which shared 22% of the market with their electric cars. BMW was third with 14%. This is the result of a strong uptake of Tesla's battery electric vehicle sales with a tenfold increase in deliveries in the market such as UK. While at the same time, sales of the Fiat brand combustion engine vehicle were cut in half compared to the previous month. And remember, with this deal, Fiat Chrysler have to pay Tesla 1.8 billion euros. The Model 3 was, of course, the best-selling electric vehicle in March. So all the big competitors that should have killed Tesla's sales in Europe, as Mark Spiegel predicted, does not really seem to bother Tesla's sales. And this is even before the Gigafactory 4 in Berlin is producing cars in Europe. The future of Tesla in Europe is looking good. Daimler ends hydrogen car development because it's too costly. 
Daimler's Mercedes-Benz is killing its program for developing passenger cars powered by hydrogen fuel cells. The company has been working on fuel cell vehicles for more than 30 years, chasing the dream of zero emission cars that has a long driving range, three minutes fill up and emits only water vapor. But in the end the company conceded that building hydrogen car was too costly, about double the expense of an equivalent battery electric vehicle. Exactly what I have been saying in my videos and Elon said many years ago. I don't want to turn this into a debate on hydrogen fuel cells because I, I just think that they're extremely silly. It, it's just very difficult to, to make hydrogen and store it and use it in a car. Um, it, it, uh, hydrogen is an energy storage mechanism, it's not a source of energy. Um, so you have to get that hydrogen from somewhere. If you get that hydrogen from, from water, so you're splitting uh, H2O, uh, the, the electrolysis is extremely inefficient as an energy process. Uh, you know, if, if you compare, if, if you say took a uh, solar panel and use that the energy from that solar panel to just charge a battery pack directly uh, compared to uh, try to split water, take, take, the, take the hydrogen, dump the oxygen, com compress the hydrogen to an extremely high pressure or liquefy it um, and then put it in a car and run, run a fuel cell. Uh, the, the, it, it, is, it is about half the efficiency. It's terrible. Like, so why, why would you do that? It makes no sense. And then uh, hydrogen is, has very low density, um, it's a pernicious molecule that likes to get all over the place. Um, you, you get metal embrittlement from, from, from hydrogen. If you get a hydrogen leak, it's an invisible gas, you can't even tell that it's leaking. Um, uh, and, but then it's extremely flammable when, when it does and has an invisible flame. Um, if you're going to pick an energy storage mechanism, hydrogen is an incredibly dumb one to pick. You should just pick uh, methane. That's much, much easier, or propane. Yeah, and Daimler has been working on this for 30 years, but is now giving up. So, good luck Toyota. The Tesla competitor Lucid Motors factory is starting to take shape, and we will maybe see some production from them in this beginning of 2021. Their Lucid Air should be a real competitor to the Tesla Model S. And since the engineer at Lucid is a former employee of Tesla, maybe this car will deliver what they promise. And if so, this is going to be a very cool big luxury sedan that is going head to head with Tesla's Model S. Going to be exciting to see if they can do all this. Good luck Lucid Motors, I am rooting for you. And let's take a look at the Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai, because that is just amazing the speed which they are building this factory. Tesla in Shanghai just sent out a job list for working at the battery factory at the Gigafactory 3. So they are also going to produce batteries at the Gigafactory 3 soon. So cool. But some trouble have struck at the Gigafactory 4 in Berlin. Tesla has now removed all the trees and bombs from Second World War. But the soil has now shown there is too much sand in it to build the Gigafactory 4 as planned. Tesla has now withdrawn the original building plans, which were otherwise ready and approved by the state environmental authorities. But now the plan is to put thousands of steel pillars in the ground to make it stable enough for the Gigafactory. But this will no doubt delay the construction of the Gigafactory 4. NASA names the companies to develop human landers for Artemis moon missions. NASA has selected three US companies to design and develop human landing systems for the agency's Artemis program, one of which will land the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon by 2024. NASA is on track for sustainable human exploration of the moon for the first time in history and SpaceX Starship is going to be a part of this mission. Very exciting. And SpaceX finally had a successful pressure test of the SN4 Starship prototype. I guess 4 is SpaceX's lucky number. And don't miss out on Jay Leno's Garage Show, because the Tesla Cybertruck is going to Jay Leno's Garage. Season premiere set for May 20th. So. That is only in a couple of weeks. It will be so cool to see some new videos of this beast driving around in real life and to hear what Jay has to say about it. 
And South Australia is once again going all in on renewable energy and the Tesla Powerwall is the center of this new battery program in Australia. A Tesla Powerwall home battery has helped kick off one of Australia's newest renewable energy initiative. The 13.5 kilowatt hour battery, which was installed alongside a solar system at the home in New South Wales, is expected to be the first of 300,000 battery installations that will be delivered using the government interest free loans. The Powerwall 2 installation came less than two months after the government launched the pilot of the Empowering Homes program, which is aiming to promoting sustainable energy solutions to the resident in the area. The pilot is expected to last for up to 12 months and it involves offering resident interest-free loans up to 14,000 Australian dollars for a solar battery installation or up to 9,000 Australian dollars for a battery storage unit. Once again, South Australia is showing the way. And the Tesla community once again shows how awesome it is. When this guy, whose son is a huge Tesla fan, asked if the few owners could parade by their house for his son's birthday. And 36 kind strangers from all over St. Louis area showed up and made his day. Proving Tesla and Elon Musk has built more than just a car. It's a community. Let's end the show on this great story and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you're not already a subscriber because I come out with this new show every Sunday and other Tesla videos in between. And as always, a big shout out to my patron that helped make this channel possible. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>